Hello, welcome to Creative View Knitting and Crocheting Podcast. I'm Katherine Kirby. Welcome back to all and welcome to new. So it's the time of evening when the birds are all singing. And lately I've taken upon myself to try to learn some bird songs and identify them with the <coughs> this specific bird. I read two books recently that really influenced me. I'm on a Jamie Langston Turner kick, and this one, A Garden to Keep, is, I don't wanna ruin it for anything about the plot or anything. I just despise when people do that on Amazon reviews and ruin it for you. So, but this woman is married to a musician and all through the book, she talks about certain music and emotions it evokes. And through that, I can't let anything go. If somebody mentions something, I have to look it up. I have to know. And so I came upon some classical songs that I've really fallen in love with. And I think anyone can go onto my channel and see my library. I think you can, but one song I came to love is called Gabriel's Oboe. Try it. And then Scottish Dance number three. The third part of it is just beautiful. So I finished that book. It was really lovely. And now I'm reading Winter Birds. And Winter Birds is about a 80-year-old lady who just wants to spend the last part of her life in peace and quiet. So she's staying with a nephew and his wife, but she doesn't want conversation, just bring me my food and leave me alone. But she does spy on them and she does check out their things when they step out of the house. So her nephew gave her a book on birds. She never thanked him for it, but then again, she reasons he never thanked me for the fortune I'm going to let him when I die. But at the beginning of every chapter, she talks about a certain passage in the book. Chapter six, the feet of the fox sparrow are large with elongated toes and claws, allowing it to dig longer and deeper. The male bird prefers solitude when he sings retreating to a high perch in a dense thicket. Well, then I have to look up these birds and see what they are, but you can go on YouTube and look up bird songs for beginners. And some of the birds I recognize, but in my own neighborhood, I want to be able to say, okay, that's a cardinal or that's a blue jay. Or, and it amazes me that God made each of their little vocal areas differently so that they all have these different songs. And it also impressed on me that birds only mate with the same bird. It's not like when we intermate dogs and all of that, no. So I am crocheting a little girl's dress for my granddaughter who's 10. And I had a lot of this done. <laughs> And today, a customer came in who had a lot to chat about, so I decided to crochet. I do think when you have classical music going, your crochet hook is just like a bow. It's just so beautiful. But here's what happened. When I joined it, sometimes if you don't sew in the end thread, after you join it, it can actually flip on you. And when you come back, you can actually twist it. But I mistook the part where it joins for a double crochet, chain two double crochet shell. And so after doing all of that, when I held it up and tried to make sense of it, I realized that I had an extra space. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Front, sleeve, back, sleeve, sleeve, wrong. So that sounds like a bird song, sleeve, sleeve. So I had to tear it all out. And you're wondering, pray tell, what is this pattern? It is, 
this little rainbow dress, which I'm not going to make it in rainbow colors. It's by Emily, Ke Emily Keenan, ages two to eight, but I'm making it a little bit bigger. Now the yarn is a yarn I've had in my shop. I don't know that you can get it anymore. It's what they call a flat or a tape construction. And it kind of has a funky, can you kind of see that, a weird? Well, nobody has wanted this yarn. It is interesting though, as the shop owner, if I make something neat out of something, then people want it. So it almost, this is the pink, gives the effect of a speckledness. It is interesting that this pink is not the pink that's showing up on the camera. This is more of a purple pink. But since she likes purple, pink, and blue, that is what I'm going to do. <laughs> I made a little rhyme. <laughs> oh, the lady in my last book was always big into poetry, which pulled me into some very, very beautiful poems. So it's interesting that these fictional characters are influencing more than real life characters. Now, the My Secret crop top, which you've seen this now 12 times. So this is the one that I just have to fix the straps for Ella. And then this is the one I'm making for her sister, which has a completely different feel about it. It is a lace weight yarn and I need a DK weight yarn. So I'm pulling from the top and the bottom and it's making a fabric that is different than I thought. I don't know what I expected, but this always reminds me of sunsets. And as long as she likes it, I'm happy. One thing is it feels wonderful. The whole time I'm knitting it, I'm thinking, this would be so nice as a sweater. I love to make a sweater. And what about just one strand, like a lace dress or a lace sweater? Ah, oh, it would be so nice. So what else is going on? I might have shown this. I think I did, but it's so pretty. It's worth showing again that um, this style of crocheting and this beautiful blanket that this gal made and that is folded in fourths. This is my big dog hiding out in the tub every day because we were babysitting or dog sitting puppies. Hartley, I think that's so cute. These are my two grandsons, Nolan and Tobin. Aren't they cute? They're like Barney and Fred on the Flintstones. Tobin is five and he just lost that high pitch children's voice that we all love. This family came into the shop today and the little girl had this rainbow colored tutu type dress on and she had that high pitched children's voice that we all love. And it's like puppy breath. You hate to see this little child um, lose it. But um, that's Cody that comes into the shop. Isn't he so sweet with his owner, Holly? Um, what was I going to say? I was kids sitting last night and they wanted to go to a playground near our house. And I thought they meant a certain playground. And Tobin kept telling me how the staff is going to be there. And I'm like, no, honey, no. Well, one time we went to the Conewaga school and we thought that they were out for the day and we're there with the dog and all of a sudden all these after school kids come out. So I thought he meant that, but what they meant was there's a playground closer to my house that um, they started this summer program. So there's four or five teenagers. There were actually only four or five children that showed up. But that's what they wanted to go to. Let me just show you that that I'm working on. And I'll explain this later. So 
Usually I pull in the alley behind the playground. And as I'm trying to pull in, there are two very large fire trucks and an ambulance. So I don't see that many children there. And I'm thinking, is it like a demonstration for the children? Well, we figure out a different way to park. And as we're walking in, I say to the fireman, uh, was there something wrong? And he said, oh yeah, one of the kids got their, their legs stuck in the sliding board. Well, they have three sliding boards and I'm looking at them. You climb up and you go down. Like, how do you get your knees or your legs stuck in a sliding board? So I asked the one teenager staff member, well, at the sides of the sliding board, up at the top are bars, like my fingers on the sides. And this boy put his, I guess, knees through and he couldn't get them out. So the poor kid, he has his knees caught. They can't get him out. His dad can't get him out. I'm picturing this poor dad. Yeah, I'll take him to the playground <laughs> and get home and have to tell his wife, all oh, the fire trucks were there, the ambulance were there. What, what happened? He looks good. So this um, teen staff member calls his dad and his dad comes with butter and tries to grease the knees, but that didn't work. So the fireman told me that they had a tool and they bent the bars and we saw the child walk away with his father. So I showed Tobin where the bars were bent. You could barely see it, just a little bit. And he looks at it and says, oh yeah. Well, when we met up with their dad later, of course, one wanted to go for burgers, one wanted to go for ice cream. Let's go for the nutritional food first. As we're ordering the burger for Nolan and the waitress takes the order, Tob I said, no, it's just one burger. Tobin pipes up, well, I want one. Grandparents, you know how it is. You have to order it. Did he eat a bite of it? Not a single bite because he ate the French fries. But anyway, the animated way that these boys are explaining this to their father when he gets there, you would have thought that we were there and we saw the whole operation. They're both talking at once, very animated, and they're saying, and they had a mechanical, Tobin, the five-year-old, they had a mechanical device and, the, and they're explaining it all, but we didn't see it, we heard it secondhand. I was telling um, my husband that Tobin drew a picture and it was a chimera, part animal, this part, that. And he told me this was a demonic like entity and something else. And I said to my husband, I'm really concerned about media and what they're doing to our children. And then a lady that was in the shop said, she sat down to watch Nickelodeon with her grandchildren. And not only were they putting all this political stuff on our little kids to join these forums and to jump into LGBT. And it's very concerning that they're doing this to our children who are young and impressionable. impressionable. So back to this pattern. On its own, I wouldn't have made this. If you look at the pattern number 31, Leaf Motif Jacket by Melissa Labar, it looks like something vintage, not something that I could see myself wearing. It was in a Vogue 2009 book. However, I have this yarn at the shop called Kitty Print. I don't know why they called it Kitty Print. It's a mohair. Um, blend, but when I saw that instead of a, I think a super bulky, um, this knitter used two strands of the kitty print and a strand of a DK weight yarn. So on a whim, I'm at the shop. Some days it gets pretty alone time. I pulled out the Creative DK, which is a cotton modal baby alpaca, two strands of the kitty print. You actually start with the color. It's very kind of ethereal and light. 
And according to this woman, this flies off your needles like a five hour baby sweater. Well, I didn't finish the baby sweater in five hours. And I told this story before where a customer came up to pay for her yarn and she said, I'm going to knit the five hour baby sweater. And I said, I didn't get finished in five hours. It took me much longer. And she said, well, I did. And I said, congratulations. I meant it sincerely. I was not being sarcastic because I think I must be a slow knitter. If I had to do it over again, I would have done knit in the front and the back instead of the big um, holes. But I don't know, we'll see. Um, I mean, I did, I've done this, uh, I did this in a short amount of time. It's fun with all of this, so we'll see. Hopefully I'll have it done this weekend. So, listen to the birdies sing and um, maybe take a listen to um, Gideon's oboe, not Gideon, Gabriel's oboe on YouTube or Scotty Stance number three and see if you don't love those songs. And in the meantime, shine, baby, shine. I'll see you next time, knitters and crocheters.